I sport a close cropped graying beard mustache. It sort of takes away from my nose. Kind of rounds my face out as much as I can. The other morning I woke up, came out to, you know, make my coffee, start my day. And I remember running my hand down my beard and on the right side of my beard, it felt like, it didn't feel like my beard. And I quickly was able to ascertain that I must have fallen out in the bed watching TV whilst, and this is the critical part of the story, whilst eating the new, the new gummy bears with the sour, sweet sugar frosting on top. Oh, those are the bomb. I, I think they're sold out everywhere, everywhere you go, everybody knows. Because those of us that are gummy bear uh, connoisseurs, uh, we know when something has, you know, reached a new pinnacle of like, you know, just awesomeness. And these new Haribo gummy bears that are frosted with like this crystal drug, the sugary, sour, sweet drug. Ugh. Well, I, you know, some mornings I've awoken to find gummy bears both in the bed and on the floor. And then you have to sort of go around and do like a gummy bear hunt. Because you don't want to lose any. You know, it's like the lost sheep, you know. You, you go and find the, the, that lost or those lost gummy bears. Because you're going to want them for later. Duh. Well, yeah, I must have fallen asleep mid-mouthful of partially uh, emulsified uh, sugar. How's that? And it must have drooled down. Is this TMI? Well, hang on. It gets worse. Or better. And it must have... I must have fall asleep. And then all of this, like, sugar emulsified spit, basically, was just drawn down the right side of my beard. No worries. I was able to figure out what had happened. I never even looked. I just came up to the kitchen sink, turned on the tap, and just started, you know, running my hand through my beard until I, until it wasn't, until it didn't feel like dried blood anymore, okay? Because if I'm being honest, that's what it felt like. When I first ran my hand down inside of my beard, it felt like dried blood. You know that feeling, dried blood on your body. Fortunately, I didn't panic. You know, like I said, it took me two or three seconds, and I was, oh, man, I must have gummy beared out. Mm. No stain on the pillowcase, fortunately, because I guess my beard absorbed it all. All of that liquid, like lava, you know, that emulsified sugar and my spit and saliva just drooling down the side of, out this, I don't know, right, uh, and into my beard. I don't know if it was multicolored, because I never wanted to look, really. Because, you know, the gummy bears are different colors. So this... This wad of just spit and saliva and, and liquefied gooey goodness was probably like almost, I don't want to say like rainbow colored because it would all be mixed together. See, it's emulsified. So it probably would have been like maybe a dark green black color all in, maybe with some red in it, you know, looking like dried blood, like tick blood. You know, when, when you pop a tick, a big fat tick, and you squeeze that bastard, you go die, bitch. And it's like this, it's like, oh, I call it dried blood lipstick. Like these girls that were real popular, I used to wear about 10 years ago. The real dark red, like dried blood. And I would call it dried blood lipstick. And, yeah. So, gummy bears, don't. I guess what I'm saying here, kids, is do not go to bed eating gummy bears. Just don't do it, and your life will be better. Fortunately, there was no stain on the pillowcase. I guess the beard absorbed all of that good, gooey, you know, emulsified, sugary spit. Damn, I talked about my spit for like five minutes. I, I look at that, I stretched that out. Almost five minutes there. Where's a pile of sec when I need one? It's coming. Oh, gummy bears. 
So if you just added a D to gummy bear, what would you have? Just add it D on the end of bear. And what do you have? That's right, gummy beard. You can call me that actually. I might be that might, I might be I might find that endearing if I was just like walking down the street and my 15 subscribers saw my height came up to me and said, Hey, gummy beard. I'd be like, Ooh, I love you. Let's go get a hotel room. God, my 15 subscribers, probably some. I don't want to know. Moving on. So. Have you ever been to like, okay. You probably heard the terminology like poetry slam. All right. Where a couple of people get up there and they, and they tee off of each other. Kind of like, or it could be a reading. Now, I want you to imagine, uh, why does the word bohemian come to my mind? I want you to imagine, oh, maybe a couple of candles, uh, uh, a score of people, 20 people or so, gathered around a room, and there's, there's you know, beanbag chairs, and there's cushies, and there's probably a, a, a coffee maker over in the corner, you know, and, and you know it's a Karen, because this is a poetry reading gang, there ain't going to be no Mr. Coffee. There's not going to be a pot of coffee over there that's been sitting there for six hours, is what I'm saying. There's going to be pod, okay? This is going to be like vanguard of coffee drinking, cutting edge, because we're at a poetry reading, okay? You're not going to be drinking 7-Eleven coffee. If you come into a poetry reading with a 7-Eleven coffee in your hand, going to be a problem. I'll leave it at that. So, you're in this poetry reading. Somebody's up there. And they're droning on and on and on. Because I don't really think it's poetry after a while. They're just droning. They're droning on and on about I, roses are red. I've got the flu. Uh, Kiss me on the noggin and 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 be my love true. You know, I mean, just just lame ass stuff. And so, one guy in the in the crowd, that pot of coffee didn't come out quite right. That is not Sumatra, bitch. You're pushing dollar store coffee, and he just loses it. He just let's just he loses it. Because he knows he's been duped. Kind of like that time I went to AJ Hibachi for my for my filet mignon. I didn't mind paying for it, but when I'm picking it out of my teeth with a toothpick afterwards, bitch, you pounded out a, a, a strip steak is what you did. And you paid and you charged me in my little Japanese restaurant for filet mignon. You had to shut up. And I never went back. It's like, charge me. I'll pay for it. Don't screw me. So yeah, that coffee's not his liking. And can you just imagine like a fist fight breaking out in a poetry reading? Can you just imagine that? Over coffee. While this young poet up on stage at the podium is, is, is pouring their heart out about red roses and blue violets and birds singing. And, and and how they can't get a woman. And judging by their poetry I, that you just heard, you can see why they can't get a woman. That's why they're in the poetry slam in the first place. Okay? Ugh. That's why yours truly has never been to a poetry reading. Oh, I think not. I've seen this girl before. I think she's Ukrainian. And I got this one in like, what do you call 4K? I downloaded it to my MacBook Air to save it. This little girl looks good too. She's petite, thin. 
She's got to be Ukrainian, though. Oof, man, she's on. She comes out on stage dressed in a... An alluring outfit. Dominatrix, almost. I'll go with that. A lot of black, a lot of lace. Just the right places. Her long, long brunette hair pulled back behind her head so that she has easy access to her whip and her hair doesn't get in the way. And she begins to whip this guy, this gimp. G-I-M-P, gimp. He's chained. He's chained to this piece of whatever, steel. Or like in a warehouse. He's wearing a mask over his head, a hood. And he's otherwise, he's nude. And she begins to whip him. And gang, she whips him. And she's enjoying it. I can see it. Even though she's an actor in that moment, beating the hell out of another human being, she's enjoying it. I can see it. And when she gets through with him, his back, I won't even describe it to you. Now, in the last track, I think it was, I talked about the guy that enjoyed being humiliated by his partner and another. And how they'd taken the art of sexual intercourse the biological function intended for reproduction. That is why your penis becomes erect so that it can become a, a implanter, an implanter, a, a tube with which to inject your seed into the woman's vagina, uterus, so that you can, whatever, procreate. Anything other than that is a perversion of its intended purpose. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. I didn't say right or wrong. I said a perversion of its intended purpose. Now, let's go back to this scenario here where the, this woman is whipping this man. I mean whipping him. Is she not very, very, similar to the cuckold in the story that I just told you about. Is there not a cord that runs through her that says, I am no good? I suffer from the human condition. And now I have been afforded an opportunity to be paid, I assume, to be paid to beat another human being mercilessly because misery loves company.